Oh yeah, it's all coming together. It's not exactly surprising that anime or Japanese animation has started to take off over here in the States. I mean, anime and manga has been around since before I was born, and it will surely continue once I'm gone. But with the most recent debacles of the MCU and basically high action adventure movies as a whole, and the lack of creativity, common sense, new characters, planning, disregard and disrespect of former and present characters, and sheer lack of story and growth, all in the place of political and personal beliefs of the writers over at Marvel and DC Comics, and with the comic book industry being in the state that it's in, with Marvel and DC Comics not even being able to break the top 50 of sales, and production studios losing their watching patrons to the like of Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan's animated counterpart, studios and the industry as a whole were facing a much bigger problem than they anticipated, and the answer to that problem that no one knew was adult animation. Interesting. See, adult animation isn't a new concept at all. I mean, we've been seeing it for decades now with The Simpsons, Family Guy, and Futurama, and it hasn't been a dying breed of entertainment, seeing how much of those shows are still running now with new seasons each and every year. With more and more outlandish and structured shows coming out like Bob's Burgers, Archer, and Rick and Morty that even go on to have featured-length films that you can actually pay your hard-earned money to go and watch. What? My point is that adult animation like manga and Japanese anime is a form of entertainment that was here before me and will be here long after me. But there was something more that needed to be added to the genre, something to revitalize and market the genre in a way that entertains and stimulates the audience in a way that anime has been able to do for decades. Something to move on from the niche stereotype that adult animation is just made for a half-interested and brainless form of entertainment to simply melt our minds until it's time to go to sleep and repeat the process all the next day. And what Skybound Entertainment and Riot Studios were able to do was exactly that with Arcane and Invincible. If you haven't had the free time to watch these shows, or maybe this is even your first time hearing about them, I'm going to try to keep the spoilers to a minimum because I definitely recommend you guys go watch this show for yourself and then come back to the video to have a more detailed and informed opinion about what you really just watched because I could easily go on gushing about these two shows, but nothing is better than that first spoiler-free watch. But if you've seen these shows and you're still here, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, there is one that I liked more than the other, and that's Arcane. But why? That will definitely come in due time, but first you have to know exactly what Arcane is even about. The story takes place in the city of Piltover, a modern and embracing city with a structured society, and most of it being made of upper to middle class citizens, kind of like modern San Francisco. Underneath it all is the forgotten side of the city known as the Undercity, a polluted and crime ridden state that houses the city's most undesirable people and filled with homelessness, drugs, gangs, and crime lords running the place. Also kind of like modern San Francisco. UNACCEPTABLE CONDITION! We follow our main characters Vi and Jinx, or Powder depending on where we're at in the story. Two sisters who were both born in the Undercity and raised by the crime lord or leader of the Undercity, Vander. As a man with a past full of violence from clashes with the two sides of the city, Vander is now a changed man and leading the Undercity in a way of an independent state to the city above. Therefore raising Vi and Powder to be the same. Being the eldest of the two, Vi grew up to be a tough and courageous woman, a street fighter able to handle her own even with the toughest of threats in the Undercity, and really stepping up to the role of her father. While Powder, being the youngest, was still naive, and most of the time still in situations that she was in way over her head, and understandably so. While this is all going on, we follow Jace, another main character who just graduated as a genius from his academy, and is ready to make his mark on his city and the world with his invention of his experimental and dangerous new technology, Heztech which uses the source of magic that Jace believes that will bring new innovations and in leading long-lasting prosperity for the city of Piltover. And as he and his fellow scientist Victor start to advance the technology and the magic that Heztech truly is in the fine line of destruction and peace that it can truly bring to the two sides of the city, and with Jace moving his way through the political structure, eventually landing himself on the seat of the council, we watch as he maneuvers his way through what is right and what is wrong for the sake of himself, the people that he loves, and the two cities that he pledged to make a better place. 
back in the Undercity as a bad situation gets made worse, with lives being lost and the political structure of the Undercity collapsing as a whole, all being led to the conclusion that it was all Powder's fault. The two sisters are now split up with the youngest of the two, Powder, being taken by the antagonist of the story, Silco, a former brother in arms to her father and former leader of the city, Vander. With his only real goal to liberate the Undercity into truly becoming an independent and free city-state, being renamed to Jinx, she now lives her life as a mentally unstable enforcer to Soko, still traumatized by her past actions and haunted by the apparent abandonment of her sister. This show obviously works well for many reasons, but if you can hear the passion in my voice, it's really just broken down into having an amazing and compelling story within the world that is new, vibrant, and lively, as well as a dark and gritty world, leaving you with a sense of hopelessness when you're in the Undercity with characters that you actually care about and what they're going through and what they're trying to achieve. Jinx and Vi are obviously the core of the story, but the show wouldn't be as great without characters like Caitlyn being introduced to Vi, showing her a different point of view of what citizens from Piltover can actually be like, becoming a more understanding and caring character throughout the story, even forming a subtle but understanding romantic relationship between the two. Holy crap, you're beautiful. And understandably so. The relationship between Soko and Jinx was done perfectly. The character of Soko never truly showed us if he genuinely cared about Jinx or if she was just a pawn in his rise to power for the sake of his own personal goals. As well as Jinx, a loyal enforcer, but more importantly, really seeing Soko as her father, the man that raised her when she was at her lowest and really had nothing left in the world. But still having that unwavering fear, hope, and love that her sister could return for her leading us in the direction for the dynamic of the two characters to have genuine moments of care and love for each other, as well as tense and gripping conversations. You would also never know that this show was led by two female main characters, as well as an incredibly diverse cast. If you didn't know, this show is based in the world of one of the most popular games in the world, League of Legends. And even if you're a noob like myself who knows nothing about League of Legends, you can still have a fantastic time watching this show without knowing a single thing. Characters like Vi, Jinx, Caitlyn, Jace, Mel Medarda, and shit, even Heimendinger, and he's just a damn raccoon. Thank you, sweet rabbit. Are the exact type of characters that Hollywood is looking for in their huge blockbuster films, and I think that they can truly take a hint from a show like this. The female characters in this show are written as normal characters, with their own goals, motivations, traumas, and past that are separate from their defining genders, and characters that are the glue of the show and can't be made without them. Same goes for characters like Jason and Mel. While I don't know the actual lore and geographic locations from which they're born in this universe, they're both brown and black characters that again have their own goals, motivations, traumas, and past that are separate from their defining race. And it's not even something that's mentioned in the show, because at the end of the day, this is a fantasy world made to entertain the likes of myself, people like me, the casual viewer, and the fandom that League of Legends community has made. The art and animation style is also absolutely gorgeous, and that's coming from someone who watches mostly anime. I wouldn't be surprised if studios started to move in this direction of more of a 3D animation style, but honestly, I don't know if it can even be replicated to the precision and the craft that this show really gave to the genre. You can tell that they spent no expense when it comes to the fights, which are choreographed to be a little bit more realistic, but with magic and fantasy that this world could bring to the table. It was unique and executed almost perfectly, and seemed to one-up itself after each and every fight. And to give you an example of how unique the animation style is, and how the direction of the show was, one of, if not the greatest and most stake-invested battles of the entire show, was basically edited, choreographed, and animated to be like a music video. And it was easily the most riveting and high-intensity battles that I have ever seen from the genre. I couldn't have been more engaged while watching the show, and my eyes were practically glued to the screen whenever any action was going on. And honestly, I'm excited to see what new and creative minds can bring to the genre of adult animation 
because I think it's a genre where a creative person can really show off their best work and vision. And if you couldn't tell, I definitely go recommend a watch. I decided halfway through that I'm just going to make this a part one of two of these adult animation series videos because honestly, there was just simply too much to say when it came to Arcane. And I didn't want to disrespect a show like Invincible when it could easily be a show deserving of its own video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that, especially for everyone who thinks Invincible was better than Arcane. I'm sorry, they were easily both 9 out of 10s, but, you know, one had to come before the other. And make sure you like this video to get it out there, because honestly, if not for me, this show deserves more praise and more shows should adapt and learn from a show like this. But that's all the words I got for today, so goodbye.